remember that when we compose, we work in draft view. Um, oftentimes, Word, when you open up a document, will automatically open to print layout view. Um, so if to change it to draft view, you go to view. And then here under document views, you would hit draft. What we'll do, um, we'll go over just briefly the composition procedure, but I do want to say this before we do that, that the reason that composition is so important and why we spend so much time on it, it's because as you saw in Tim's, um, you know, uh, tutorial of the, or overview of the well-formed document workflow, workflow, you'll see the composition is right there at the beginning, right? And it's important that if you are able to, you know, if you're coming into the well-formed document workflow from that beginning where you all you have is a raw file from the author um, to be able to understand composition at least to the level where you're able to um, you know troubleshoot some issues it does not mean that you need to know the entire SCML list it doesn't mean that you can look at a document and say I know that that's BQ1S for you know whatever reason it might be right it just means that you have this idea that composition fits into the overall well-formed document workflow because once you apply structure here everything else down the line is a whole lot easier um, and it actually reduces um, the work that you would have to do um, continuing on. And if you ever have any, you know, composition questions or anything like that, we are always here to help. You know, that is our, our goal and our mission to make sure that you understand this. And let's say later on down the line, you guys become experts at composition um, and you notice things that are like, hey, this is kind of weird or anything like that. We are always open to your feedback and to what you might um, need from us. So um, I just want to leave that out there so nobody feels um, overwhelmed. I like that idea that we said at the beginning that it's, it's an overwhelming, but it's not bad overwhelming. That's a good thing. Uh, but we're going to try to minimize the overwhelming uh, as much as possible. So we went ahead um, just to go back. I see that the chat is blinking at me. Let's bring that back up. Of course, of course. That's actually, Mark, that's where we are starting off today. Um, I'm just going to give a quick overview to get us back to that point. Uh, but do, thank you for, for bringing that up. We are going to discuss uh, structure indicators. Um, and that's where we're going to lead today. There you go. <laughs> I beat Tim to it. Um, so One quick question, I guess. I just want to make sure that our terminologies are correct. Mm -hmm. Because, Mark, are you referring to the actual like styles that you're seeing on the left-hand side? Because we're, we would differentiate what's called a structure indicator from those from that composition, the, the styles used in composition. So I just want to make sure we're not accidentally skipping over because right. we'll, we'll differentiate how we use those terms a little bit. If you look over here on the left-hand side of your Word file in draft view, you'll see that uh, certain paragraphs have already been marked up, right? Or Compose, which is the term that we use again. So whenever we use composition, it is applying structure to an element in a document. So we've composed, for example, this book one, which I'm highlighting here as SER. SER is for series entry, right? So for an entry in a series list. Um, and so that we call a style. Right. That is what we're, you know, when we say, um, you know, this style is X, Y, or Z, we're referring um, to what's there on the SCML list and what we see here, right? A structure indicator, right? Just to make sure, right? And you don't need to follow me here. I'm just doing this as uh, to define it before we get to that point again. You actually insert it here using the SAI. And I will just do that here. And these are structure indicators, which essentially give, um, if, to put it in, in as simple terms as, as I can, um, it's to give the hub an indication that this section is one section and it should not be combined with the rest. The, the hub is um, smart enough, it's been programmed to uh, be able to tell that, for example, anything with a CT is its own section because chapter titles are the major, uh, excuse me, chapters are the major divisions of books, right? Uh, but, or one of, because you also have part and unit, but for sake of simplicity, 
you know, chapters are a major division of a book. Um, so the hub will be able, does not need for you to indicate that, th that, you know, a chapter is its own section. It will pick that up on its own, but when you have front matter, especially in the front matter, you don't have chapter title or part title or unit title or any of those to sort of indicate that these are sections. So we sort of force it and say, this is where you begin this chapter section and this is where it ends. And then I would insert structure indicators for the rest. And I'll show you how to do that um, later on, right? Once we go over this small overview. Um, and this is an image query. Um, what we'll do, let's do this so that way um, we don't jump around and cause uh, any confusion. We'll go over just the procedure um, in this sense um, as we're going to go through now. And then um, that should answer your question. Once we get to the image query section, I'll, I'll make sure to um, spend a little time there. 